You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, episode 17, sonnet 16. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What if I say I'm not just another no. one in your place? You're, You're the, the pretender. pretender. What if I say I will never surrender? Last week's episode inspired me to try to compile my podcast notes into a readable format for my patrons. But an hour or two into doing that, and I've realized that I actually have everything I need to convert this podcast series into a book, to which there would be significant advantages. It's sad, then, that it's only now, after some heavy editing of my previous episodes and a look into Sonnet 16, that I've realized just how awfully the modernized text of the sonnets has been fiddled with. And from this point on, I'm going to have to use the original 1609 quarto text exclusively and only reference the modernized text if I get stuck. The glaringly obvious problem line from Sonnet 16 is line 10. Which this times pencil or my pupil pen. Which in the original text had everything after the word this in parentheses and in the modernized edition is merely separated with commas, which limits the range of possible and valid interpretations. While rereading Sonnet 2, which I've just reformatted for the book, I realized that line 10 and 11's If thou couldst answer, this fair child of mine shall sum my count and make my old excuse. Half of line 10 through to the end of line 11 has been surrounded by apostrophes, in spite of the fact that in the original quarto text there is no punctuation of the sort, which shuts down an alternate reading of those lines. That reading will, of course, be included in the book. Fortunately, I found a link to a high-quality version of the original sonnets, which I will be making available in the description. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and as importantly, for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with and possessed by for years. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Every dollar breeds a page that brings us closer to a beautiful graphic novel that will make the sonnets so much more accessible. And of course, ten times that dollar will bring you the finished product ten times faster. Right, let's analyze Sonnet 16. It might be useful to remind you, the listener, that the reader is expected to adopt the role of echo in the sequence. And as a reader consciously reading the sonnet out loud and addressing the sonnet reflexively, Sonnet 16 is a fantastic example of how well this works. But wherefore do not you a mightier way make war upon this bloody tyrant time and fortify yourself in your decay with means more blessed than my barren rhyme? To summarize the opening quatrain in modern English, but why don't you fight inexorable time with something more blessed than my rhyme? As usual, this can be read in both directions between Shakespeare and his sonnet reflection, as well as from the sonnet to the reader. Regarding my previous comment about Echo reading the sonnet back to itself, the reader is not a poet, and therefore the reader's repeated rhymes are barren. So we can read this quatrain as the reader asking the sonnet why it doesn't fortify itself with stronger defenses than the reader's empty words. Now stand you on the top of happy hours, and many maiden gardens yet unset, with virtuous wish would bear your living flowers, much liker than your painted counterfeit. Now stand you can be read both as a passive description of a current state, or as an instruction. As a passive description, this quatrain is stating that the sonnet has many happy hours of reading ahead of it and at only 16 sonnets, there are many blank pages yet to fill. Blank pages with a virtuous wish to carry Shakespeare's embedded spirits to the reader to breathe them new life, which would be more like the biological Shakespeare than the counterfeit sonnets could ever hope to be, or that last line could simply mean more likable than this sonnet in particular. As an instruction, Shakespeare, the sonnet, and the reader are being instructed to get to work with their writing and reading. Some say that liker is understood to mean more like, and that then is to be read as than, but I'm not so certain. If Shakespeare is speaking to himself through the sonnet, this last line could also be saying that the bard's painted counterfeit, the sonnet, would be more liked once it has succeeded in planting his words in the ensuing empty pages 
and in the mind of the reader. So should the lines of life that life repair, which this, time's pencil, or my pupil pen, neither in inward worth nor outward fare, can make you live yourself in eyes of men. Repair means both to mend and to go in the sense of to go to a place. And Shakespeare is mending his broken legacy by embedding his life in the lines of the sonnet. Pencil meant a painter's brush, which could be used as a verb meaning to mark or sketch using that implement. Pupil meant orphan child, disciple or student, as well as center of the eye. The sonnets are the orphan children of Shakespeare, as well as his disciples, and they are also his eyes, which, from Sonnet 24, are the windows to his soul. Pen is both a writing implement and an enclosure for animals, as well as the verbs for putting something in writing and for putting an animal in an enclosure. The latter meaning follows the established farming theme. With these meanings, the text in parenthesis Times pencil or my pupil pen can be unpacked to Father Times creation and creator, or Shakespeare's orphaned disciple and writer, or entrapped orphaned disciple. Outward fair might mean beauty or fairness, but I believe its meaning to include the identically spelled French fair, meaning to do or make, as well as F A R E fair meaning a journey, a payment for passage, and a person conveyed in a vehicle. Let's put all of that into a reading, temporarily disregarding the parenthesis. The lines of words that embody and remake Shakespeare's spirit should follow the previous instructions to beget more sonnets, which this poet or sonnet or reader can make you live as yourself in men's eyes, neither in inner worth nor outward passage. Rewording the quatrain like this highlights the problematic nature of the words which this neither can make. It is natural to derive which this sonnet cannot make you live from the positioning of the word neither in the middle, but it is also possible to read from this that the sonnet can make you live as yourself in men's eyes, but not without losing the true depth of character or appearance of the original author. Parenthesis reinstated, then, either this poet or sonnet or reader is playing the role of both Father Time's paintbrush and Shakespeare's writing disciple, or they are being manipulated by those entities. An alternate interpretation of the parentheses is that they produce a space to indicate that the sonnet is addressing Shakespeare, who is the painter's brush used by Father Time, or the sonnet, who is his eye and will become his orphan child. To give away yourself keeps yourself still, and you must live drawn by your own sweet skill. The closing couplet reminds us of the lending theme established back in Sonnet 4, and the word still is interesting because it has the natural meaning of even now or yet, but also the additional meanings of motionless and quiet, which describe the fixed and voiceless sonnet text. To maintain his self and his legacy, Shakespeare must give himself away in the form of the sonnets. He must live on in the lines that he has written with his own sweet skill. While the sonnets have been recognized and adored by scholars and fans the world over, they haven't enjoyed the same kind of mass appeal as his plays, and Shakespeare's intention for his works was always to appeal to a broad cross-section of society. It is my aim to rescue the sonnets from obscurity, from the darkness, and to that end I am producing a graphic novel adaptation, recording these podcasts, and tattooing 154 images representing the sonnets onto my body. Once again, I need your help to make this happen. Please consider signing up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking. Keep up with the graphic novel at sonnetcomics.com and join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnetcomics with an x. Thanks for listening. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What if I say I'm not, not just another no. one in your place? You're, You're the, the pretender. pretender. What if I say I will never surrender? Never.